very warm welcome to Europe PCR Roundtable Discussions in 2019. Uh, we're talking today about the co-op trial, a landmark study in functional mitral regurgitation presented at last year's TCT Congress in San Diego. And it's my warm pleasure also to be here with two experts in the field, one of which is Patrice Guérin from Nantes and Cybel Carr, one of the main Hi. investigators of the co-op trial, uh, professor at UCLA. So if we go into the trial, uh, we want to know what we are treating. And perhaps, Patrice, you can give us an idea about the natural outcome of functional mitral regurgitation in a heart failure population, Patrice. Yes, thank you, Stefan. So first of all, it's not a valvular disease. It is a consequence of uh, myocardial disease and uh, left ventricle disease. So that means there is a dilatation of the left ventricle, dilatation of the annulus, uh, papillary muscle displacement and cord tethering, and finally, mitral valve closing force uh, reductions that leads to this uh, uh, mitral regurgitation. And we have to take in account this pathology because it is a very, very serious, severe disease. We know that the mortality is high and probably we can compare this situation as a cancer with a poor prognosis. I think this is a very important point and we have seen uh, that in this trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, journal and if we really look into the data we've seen that there is a mortality benefit in a randomized trial and this is the first in 30 years of attempts to reduce the mitral regurgitation by surgery that shows a reduction in mortality of 38 percent with a number needed to treat that is below six and I think this compares favorably uh, to any uh, medical, optical, medical treatment and perhaps uh, also the quality of life and the rehospitalization which was discussed in the trial and Saibel you were heavily involved there uh, was also changed over the course of the trial which uh, took some time and showed that we need some selection of patients to treat but could you highlight what also happened to the rehospitalization rate Saibel? So I think the rehospitalization rates were dramatically reduced in patients who got the mitroclip in this carefully selected population. And I don't think I've seen any clinical trial in heart failure with this dramatic difference in benefit between the control group and the device group. And if the number needed to save one patient from a heart failure in two years is only three patients. So I think this is probably very impactful. I think that's an important message to say that Saibal, as a main investigator to this trial, I think you have included 46 patients in the trial. Could you highlight a little bit about the ejection fraction, the ROA, but also ventricular diameters that contributed to this uh, very beneficial effect, both in hard endpoints, but also in softer secondary and primary endpoints? So we were quite careful in our selection process that we took patients with moderate to severe, severe uh, mitral regurgitation based on the American Society of Echocardiogram guidelines. And we made sure that the ventricle sizes were not too large and the patients were excluded if their end systolic diameter was greater than seven. So we made sure we took patients with more severe MR and slightly smaller ventricles. And in this group of patients, we actually showed a dramatic benefit, as you can see, on all the three indices, heart failure, mortality, and quality of life. I think that's a very important message. So we excluded the far outliers that had no chance to neither remodel nor to stabilize. And if we see also the differences, we saw that the natural course of the disease in the control group was a farther deterioration in ventricular size and in outcome. And I think also the need for ELVAT or heart transplantation therapy was significantly higher in the control group. So, uh, Patrice, uh, there has been, of course, in Europe a perception that at the ESC meeting, just three weeks before the presentation of the co-op trial, there was a second study performed in France, which was the MITRE-FR study, which showed different results. But we are now interested to hear what are the study population differences. Is this a complementary group of patients or are they mainly overlapping? and we saw less beneficial effects in the mitre FR trial than the co-op trial. Could you elucidate a little bit on this? Yes, thanks. So first of all, I would like to underline the fact that mitre FR is a very good study, but it's not the same study. 
but Mitra Efer and Coapt are not opposed. No, they are working true. together to define the good target population to treat. And we have the Coapt study with a uh, very selective study with a very serious and severe patient with a relatively large airway and a smaller left ventricle and diastolic volume. To the best of my memory, it was 30% over in terms right. of uh, airway in a COAP study uh, compared to a Mitra FR study, and 30% below in terms of left ventricular Spons. and diastolic volume. So we are not talking about the same patient at all. That is a very important point. The second point, I think, is the importance of the run-in period and to stabilize the patient on optimal medical therapy. And what we found that if, you, if your MR grade was three or four plus at 30 days after treatment, whether GDMT or mitoclip, you did pretty badly. 72% actually had an event rate, there was a higher mortality. On the other hand, if you achieved two plus or less MR at 30 days following treatment, irrespective of whether it's GDMT or mitoclip, you actually did quite well over a period of two years. The final thing is that we did not see a difference between people who had two plus MR residual or one plus MR, at least up to two years. And the third point is that if you had two plus MR at 30 days with medical treatment, a lot of these patients over two years got worse. On the other hand, in the mitoclip arm, if you had two plus MR at 30 days, you remain stable. So basically, mitoclip offers a stable treatment of our MR, whereas in GDMT, it's not necessarily stable. So these were the three important conclusions from the paper that I just presented yesterday. So Saibal, could you give us a short overview over the quality of life improvement effects uh, in the co-opt trial? So the overall study showed actually a dramatic improvement of quality of life compared to medical therapy. But to better understand the Mitrofrance trial, what we did is we took a subset of patients in the co-opt trial which appeared like the Mitrofrance. That means lower EROs and larger ventricles. And what we found, if you take these patient groups, there wasn't much of a difference in mortality or heart failure, similar to the conclusion that you got in the study, but there was a dramatic improvement of quality of life. So we can think it, it, with this larger population of patients, when we come to a patient treatment, it doesn't necessarily have to include only patients like the COAP trial. You can actually broaden the population and you will definitely have improvements of quality of life, but and in some patients, or practically all patients, and a selected group will also show heart failure as well as mortality. So I, I put it more simply, we added both life to years and years to life. So what will be, Patrice, the lessons learned actually for the European uh, Society of Cardiology, for the heart failure group in Europe, what will be your conclusion from this in the everyday treatment of patients uh, in Europe? So we have to define the individual clinical uh, decision making. We can imagine something like uh, airway over uh, 30 uh, square millimeter should have been treated, and especially as the left ventricular and uh, diastolic volume is uh, lower than uh, uh, 70 uh, millimeter. And uh, of course, if the mitral valve morphology is okay for mitral clip therapy. So our final learning conclusions actually from this roundtable discussion as well as from the presentations here at Euro PCR can be that we have to look more into indexed values to the size, individual size of both the patients yeah. and the individual hearts. And we have to say that we have for the first time ever in 30 years a very safe procedure that is much yeah. safer than surgical approaches right. to functional mitral regurgitation, maybe repair or replacement of this group, and that we maybe have a first-line therapy here for a selected group of FMR patients to be treated um, in functional MR to improve outcome and the clinical benefit, to improve the clinical benefit for these patients, which is repeat rehospitalization but also quality of life and every day. And we will have a new control group for future FMR trials, which will be the MitraClip. So this is the conclusion from the round table on the co-op trial from EuroPCR 2019. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank, Thank you, you. Stefan.